Last time, I inspected the internals of the disassembled engine. This time, I'll be fresh up the cylinder head to make sure everything works. The plan is to lap the exhaust valves, install new valve stem seals, and try to resolve the scoring on the exhaust camshaft. Since I already had the camshafts, ledges, and lifters taken out, I started out by removing the valve springs. This job is near impossible without the right tools. Even with a valve spring compressor, it still takes quite a long time to get dozens of valves out. The spring gets compressed, the two halves of the keeper get removed with the pick, the compressor comes off, the top spring perch gets removed, the spring comes out, and finally the lower spring perch comes out with the help of a magnet. With the springs out, I was able to drop the valves more and look at their contact patches. The exhaust valves were clearly pitted and needed some help. I removed all the exhaust valves and started the cleaning process since I didn't want to work with a filthy head. I used a scotch bright pad to help me get the old head gasket material off, which leaves lots of fabric dust behind, so don't do this if you aren't able to do a proper rinse. There's a few plugs in the head that can come out for better cleaning. I also removed all of the hardware that was left, including the injector pump block off plate. So the previous owner put this cap on for the secondary air pump and didn't even line up the gasket before they, before they bolted it on. I began cleaning the valves using the old valve and a drill trick to clean them up. Using a brass wire brush was completely inadequate as the carbon was baked on. I wound up using sandpaper since it took off most of the carbon, then finished up with a scotch bright pad to polish to make sure there weren't any scratches left. I wasn't just cleaning them to make them look nice, the bottom of the valves would have to be clean in order for the lapping tool to stick to them. Now, please don't do what you see me doing here to remove your valve stem seals. I saw the 50s kid doing this, so I thought it must be safe, however, it caused issues as we'll see later on. I was able to get the seals off, and I didn't notice anything yet, so I moved on to making my cleaning tub. I had to go to Walmart to get a tub that was big enough to fit my whole cylinder head in, and poured some hot water from the sink in. I used concentrated simple green which worked well. By the time I was pouring the last of the hot water in, lots of the oil varnish was already dissolving off. Wow. It's way cleaner already. Lots of scrubbing later yielded a mostly clean cylinder head. There's no way the exhaust ports were ever going to be shiny clean, but I did the best I could. A quick dry was necessary, and then I tried putting my valves in for lapping. That's when I realized all the valve guides were bent for the vice grips I used to remove the valve stem seals. At this point, I was kind of SOL because I couldn't put my valves in. Repairing the guides can be done a couple of ways. I can order new guides that a machine shop will have to press in, but parts alone will cost hundreds. Or I can have the shop drill out the guides, but this would require valves with oversized stems, and again, that's hundreds in parts alone, not to mention machine shop labor. Not to mention, who knows how long this would take for a shop to get back to me, and will they even do the job right? So, after careful consideration, I went to the junkyard with a friend of mine to grab a new cylinder head. The car was partially submerged in mud, and we had to stack old parts on the ground to stand on so we weren't in water. I had to cut the hood latches off to get the hood open, and even worse, cutting off the headers took hours. I got the new cylinder head home, and at first it didn't look too much better than the original. The intake ports were almost clean to begin with, so my guess is that the PCV system on the donor car wasn't dumping oil into the intake like mine was, or maybe the valve stem seals were in better condition. My straight edge said it was warped just as much as the old one, which makes me wonder if the straight edge isn't actually straight, or maybe this is designed this way. Six thousandths. That fits and binds ever so slightly. Regardless, I began the disassembly process.
Ooh. Sludgy, sludgy. Ugh. The caps aren't too bad. These are the intakes. They have some light scoring and stuff on them, but nothing crazy. Uh, the intake cam has got some scoring on it. Probably worse than the other one I have. The exhaust caps are pretty much okay, except for one that's scored. And the exhaust cam has some pretty bad scoring on just one of the low, of the uh, journals. You can see that's, that's pretty rough. You can probably smooth that up though. So I think the exhaust cam is probably better than my other cam, um, but not by much, if at all. Now let's take a look at the shelves and lifters. So this is the exhaust lifter uh, tray. I don't want to move it too much because it'll all fall out. Uh, it's pretty filthy. You can see there's a lot of sludge in here. The lifters themselves don't look too pitted or anything, so I should be able to reuse some of those. It seems that every one of these engines has scoring on the cam lobes and caps. The exhaust was in better shape than the original head, but the intake was clearly worse. Thankfully, none of the lifters had any pitting, and they were all in better shape than the original. I repeated the process of removing all the valve springs and valves and kept everything organized as I went. This time, I bought some hose plies for getting the valve seals out. This worked far better than the vice grips, and more importantly, it didn't bend any of my valve guides. The spark plugs were still in the engine, so those came out. I repeated the whole washing process, this time letting it soak before I scrubbed off the old head gasket material, which made it much easier. Despite how the head looked, it actually cleaned up more easily than the original. It's tempting to port the head, especially on the exhaust ports. However, I can't afford to spend the days it would take to do this, and I'm staying at stock power levels for now anyways, so there's really no advantage to be gained from this. So I moved on to the valve cleaning process. I don't think I can swap valves from the old head because they're meant to match. I got all the valves cleaned up again and started the lapping process. It's hard to have enough patience to get this job done, especially when the lapping tool keeps slipping off. The results weren't too impressive, but I was confident it was better than before. The whole head went back in the tub to get cleaned again to make sure there's no lapping compound left over. Thankfully, installing new valve stem seals was far easier than removing them. They mostly pushed right onto the guides, but a small tap with a perfectly sized socket made sure they were seated properly. The new valves went in and I made sure there was no binding or grinding in the process, with everything as clean as I could get it. Now it was time for the tedious process of reinstalling the valve springs. It's more or less the opposite of the disassembly process, but getting the keepers to seat properly in the valve takes patience. I started a new cleaning bucket since the old one was cold and dirty. 
The cam and lifter ledges cleaned up beautifully, along with the cam caps. The lifters got some lube and then they fell right into place. I didn't disassemble or clean any of the lifters. My excuse is that they probably don't need it, but at the time, I didn't even know I could take them apart. With all the lifters back in their spots, the ledges could be reinstalled. I took a close look at the cams and decided to swap in my old intake cam, since it was in better condition than the one I got from the junkyard. The assembly process isn't hard, but it's important to orient the cam and tighten the caps in the right order so it doesn't bend the cam too much. For the exhaust cam, I did a quick pass with some sandpaper on the scored lobes to make sure there was no burr sticking out. A quick pass with some scotch bright pad on the caps and made sure they were smooth and polished up as well. With both the cams installed, I spun them both by hand to make sure all the valves opened and closed properly with no binding. Everything looked good, so at this point I've got a cylinder head that's ready for action. I'll install the timing components when it's time for the cylinder head to go back on the bottom end. But before that can happen, we've got an entire lower end to rebuild. So if I were to do this again, I could have saved myself a lot of time. First of all, I'd be more careful removing my old valve stem seals. That way I wouldn't have had to torture myself getting a new cylinder head from the junkyard. I don't think I would have removed any of the intake valves since they were all in good condition. Why spend the time taking all those valves out just to do seals when they weren't even leaking? The cleaning process takes ages, so it was good I had a whole tub, but changing out the water with fresh, simple green and hot water would have sped things up quite a bit. Having a spring compressor is essential. I should have bought one of these in advance so I didn't have to wait for it to arrive. Anyways, I think that about does it. As always, thanks for watching, feel free to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next part where we rebuild the entire bottom end.